Fossil Hay from CFA. What's up guys? Ash Pigale here, owner of Charleston Fossil Adventures and photographer and co-author of A Beachcomber's Guide to Fossils. I am out here on the beach today to help you maximize the amount of shark teeth you can find in as little time as possible. Let's put to rest the dispute. Is it better to search the shoreline with your eyes or is sifting the best method to walk away from the beach with a handful of shark teeth. We are going to test four different methods against each other to see which one reigns supreme. Fair warning, the answer just might surprise you. Be sure to watch until the end to see which method produced the most teeth. Okay, enough chit chat, let's get into it. First, let's try looking along material that has already been uncovered. So we are surface collecting outside of the waves. One thing you should notice about these segments is that I'm collecting all of these shark teeth from the strand line. The ocean has sorted all of this material together. It's grouped it along in these nice little clusters of gravel and shark teeth, and it's done all of the heavy lifting for me. The waves have previously washed the stone clean. There's nothing hiding these teeth. As you can see, they are right smack dab out in the middle of the open. All right guys, the next method we are going to try is walking along the shoreline as the waves are washing through gravel. And of course, frequent viewers of this channel know, I'm not just keeping my eyes open for shark teeth out there. There are so many cooler fossils that will wash up on our beaches if you know what to look for. Take this shark vertebra, for instance. Absolutely stunning. This is a massive vertebra to belong to a shark with massive teeth, just like this chub utensis tooth right here. Absolutely gorgeous fossils. This time they have been uncovered by the waves and the waves are still going through there. So there's a chance that these fossils could have been covered up or that I walked over similarly amazing fossils and I just didn't know it. For our next method, let's try looking at sifting. 
So specifically, let's sift material where we already see shells. Sometimes there are no shells visible on the beach. You might just have a bare stretch of sand. So what if you take your sifter and try and sift through the sand, see if you can get some shells and shark teeth mixed in there. So one thing I've noticed, I've come down a fair bit in the sand, probably about four or five inches, and you can see that it kind of changes color. Uh, we've got a darker layer here, and then it turns a little lighter down in the bottom. All that light stuff, that's just pure sand. But what I've noticed in the darker layer is that there are some little bits of phosphate sticking out of the wall there and hopefully associated with them are shark teeth. Look at that, a teeny tiny tooth. One other observation, all of this material is suddenly coated in sand. It's really hard to see what is gray and what is black. So if I was a little closer to the water, washing this off would be a good thing to do. And please, if you do this method, Always remember to fill in those holes. Fair warning, digging around in the sand can be hazardous. I sliced my finger open on a shell. Thank goodness, I always carry around a first aid kit. All right, our four trials are up. I've got four bags of teeth right here. Let's go back to the studio and see what method is the best one to find shark teeth on the beach. As you can see, one category outperformed the others by more than double. Simply by walking along the beach and using my eyes in the dry sand, I found 64 shark teeth and seven other types of fossils in 15 minutes. That's pretty, That's pretty incredible. incredible. The next two categories both yielded pretty similar results. Both walking along the shoreline as the waves crashed through gravel and shell material as well as sifting sand where you see rocks and shell material, both produced 27 shark teeth each, while the wet sand produced an additional five fossils and the sifting in the dry sand produced another four. Lastly, that leaves us with searching for that hidden shell layer underneath the sand. Now, this was a pretty difficult task for me. I was at a site that is known for fossils. They are everywhere at this locality, so finding a band of rock hidden underneath the sand should not have been a hard task. When I found that layer, even though I was searching in that material, I found two shark teeth and one stingray tooth. 
That's a pretty terrible result considering if I spent those same 15 minutes walking along an area where I saw shells and rocks, I could have found 60 plus fossils. So what's at play here? Why is walking along the surface the most productive method of finding shark teeth while you're at the beach? I hinted at this earlier. If you let the waves do the hard work for you, washing sand off of the fossils, congregating them into areas that have the same size material, shells up at the high tide line being a couple inches across, maybe you're going to find some shark teeth that are also two inches up there. Working your way down the beach into what I call the oatmeal to cereal flake size material, you're going to find a ton of teeth in this section. That's just because most of these teeth are going to be the same size. They're about a half inch to an inch long. And as you can see from my take, across the board, that is the most common size tooth I found, regardless of species or location where I look. Sifting at many localities is really not that great. If you are using this method, you're actually searching through less material than by walking along the surface where the waves have uncovered everything. In 15 minutes, I probably searched about one, maybe two cubic feet because I had to find the sand where these fossils were uncovered. I had to gather it up and put it in my sifter. And then once it was in there and I classified it by shaking the sifter, I had to look through all of the rocks and shells that were piled on top of each other and find all the shark teeth and fossils hidden in there. That took time and that time is very valuable. I want you to find as many teeth as possible when you visit the beach. So simply walking along and using your eyes is going to be your best bet if you only have a limited amount of time. And a quick note here about sifting. If you are going to bring a sifter to the beach, please check the local and state regulations regarding fossil and artifact collection. Some states like Florida allow screening of sediment with the use of shovels and other tools throughout the entire state as long as you have a permit. North Carolina similarly is pretty unrestricted, but here in South Carolina, we are not allowed to sift or use a tool of any kind in the waterways. So if you're on the beach between the low and high tide line and you're just kind of going through the sand that's there on the surface, that's completely fine. That is allowed. But the moment you go underwater, the moment you're in our creeks and our waterways, you are not allowed to use a sifter or tool of any kind. I bring this up because I want everyone to enjoy this hobby. I want you to find amazing shark teeth. But most of all, I want to ensure that we do not ruin this for future generations. So please be diligent about what your state allows. So if you're one of the 33% of my viewers still watching at this point, if you feel like I've earned it, I would love your subscription to the channel and a like on this video. It really does help it to spread to more people who are fascinated about fossils and want to learn more about our Earth's prehistory. As always, happy hunting, collect responsibly, and we'll see you next time.